Let's go in depth now on the congressional level. A lot happening in Washington, D.C. as of late. Our Utah representatives have been staying quite busy. Had the chance to catch up with Congressman Blake Moore earlier today. We spoke about issues that impact really everyone across the country right now, including Utahns. And what's the latest from Washington and what is being done in the debt ceiling conversation? Yes, you're right. It is a very big thing. Um, and what's being done is folks are talking. Right. And my biggest frustration with this is that we've wanted this for several months. Um, when it all of a sudden became June 1st, when Secretary Yellen communicated it to June 1st, all of a sudden the White House was willing to meet that next week. So we we saw for several months what you saw is an initial meeting with Speaker McCarthy and, and President Biden. And then you saw this this drought of like 90 plus days or something. And we just can't we can't have it. We knew it was on. We knew it was looming and we've got to be willing to engage in dialogue. What is happening right now to address those ongoing conversations at our border and uh, Title 42 as a whole immigration um, and the situation at the southern border specifically? Right. Um, there is so much going on and it's all tragic. And you've seen so much mayhem. Um, you've seen uh, individuals that are suffocated in the back of vans and trucks. Uh, I was down at the border uh, last year, a day or two after one of the National Guardsmen went out to rescue somebody that was crossing illegally into the river, and he himself drowned, trying to save someone else's life. Um, we have incentivized border uh, cartel activity. By taking away the migrant protection protocols, we are incentivizing cartels to lie to these individuals that want to come to the United States for the right reasons. They want to come and work here. They want to live the American. They want to be a part of here. Everybody agrees on that. But if you enable the cartels to dupe these people into coming and saying, it's all going to be good if I just get you across the border. So give me $5,000. They are a billions and billions of dollar organization run by drug cartels. Then you add in fentanyl. Fentanyl is not just some talking point. We're seeing enormous rates of people dying because of fentanyl. They were unwittingly using it. They didn't know what it what it was. Um, it's been it's been weaponized to get into our system. It's coming through the border. It's also coming through ports. We have got to put a clamp on this, but the majority of this is coming through the border. So it is a problem. So we have to address this. Migrant protection protocols, uh, aka the Remain in Mexico policy, that alone would do more to deter border cartel activity on the border than anything. You have to strengthen with physical borders. You have to increase presence um, with, with agent presence, with drone technology, everything that we can do to strengthen the border. And we have to get to a point where we are embracing um, more more legal immigration with respect to you know revamping some of the visa systems and things like that. Uh, flooding has been a very real concern, uh, top to bottom state of Utah, specifically in your district. There have been issues since kind of the beginning of when the runoff began. Um, having people come visit you, talking to people in your district, what else can be done with flooding? What are you hearing from people? It, it's kind of the same statewide, but what is coming to your, what is coming to your office? Yeah, so I work closely with uh, Weber County the Weber Basin Conservancy group, uh, amazing group of people that are on top of things all the time. And, you know, they said like, you know, drought's bad, but wait till it starts flooding. <laughs> we have to take it one step back and say, we have been, we have been hoping and praying and, and, and needing as much rain as, and snow as we got. I didn't understand before I came to Congress, how unique Utah was in something called, uh, it's called, it's, it's called the good neighbor authority. Um, it, what it what it ultimately does is it allows for our state leaders to interact with our federal um, participants, Forest Service, BLM. It allows for us to operate in a more in a less bureaucratic fashion, and um, these agreements that we sign, and that's what the bill is trying to do is to create it more to to to, to lower the burden on uh, like the bureaucratic burden on entering into these. Um, stewardship agreements. Utah does them really well. We are an example for the rest of the country, and it will it will enable more states to engage in these agreements and and encourage them to do it and highlight for them and how to go about doing it. So that's the key piece of the bill. 
it also helps us leverage technology to truly target the, you know, if you have, if you have a forest service, there is like 10% of that forest that could produce 90% of the risk at a catastrophic wildfire. And it helps us target that area and then how to go about some of the management associated with it. Uh, it's a bipartisan bill. Uh, we've got a good co-sponsor on it. Um, Utah, yes, we always have to be vigilant. And I think we do a good job of communicating that. But the, re the worst part of our fire seasons is typically breathing in the smoke from California and Oregon. And uh, this is something that we want to encourage our, our Western states to, to enter into these agreements and you know, see some of the nights and the positive effects that we've had at the state of Utah. So at the end of our conversation, I asked the congressman if he'd like to share anything else with Utahns. He brought up Memorial Day. Today, he joined others to visit the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. He would like to remind others to take some time this weekend to reflect on all of those who have served and sacrificed before us.